Hey, it's Monday. Happy day after Easter. Blessings on everybody. And uh, here we go again. So we got two more weeks. We got two more weeks to go. We got this week and next week. And then there's a, we'll talk about the final exams. And uh, I don't want to get you too excited about that final, but I think you're going to be excited about that final uh, when I tell you. Ah, what the heck, cat's out of the bag. Um, I'm going to have to sort this out, but I'm not so sure about doing a final. I think you've done a lot of drawings already. I might just have you do some final, pick your pick of which one you want to redo. I might do something like that, but it's going to be pretty, uh, it's going to be, it's not going to kill you. Let's just say it like like that. I think, I think I'm going to give you a chance. I think what I'm going to do is give you a chance in the uh, baseball speak. Kevin? Hey, Turk, you ever, you ever play baseball when, you know, <laughs> I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you, Kevin. Uh, I know, uh, Kevin, Chuck LaMoosler, I'm talking to you. I know that's your baseball fan. I'm going to let you knock it out of the park, all of you. And um, my goodness, let's see. So number 10, we're going to be talking about corrosion. It is, happens to be, uh, chapter 27 in the textbook right there. Chapter 27, that's the one we're doing. Same textbooks that you've been using all along. I'll put that aside. And uh, let's see. I think we'll pause for just a minute. It's all about corrosion. But more importantly, let's take, let's take a look at one of my favorite pictures. Absolutely. Uh, not something that you want to be working on. This is the end of a ship. It's been sitting there too long. Uh, this is, uh, this isn't, uh, don't make any jokes. This is not the uh, training ship after uh, next year's class does its main. No, I'm kidding. No, that's not, that's not, that's not even nice. No, this is, this is real far gone, but we're going to talk about that. And we're going to say, you know, try to say, well, well, we can see what happened. I mean, this is just, I'm going to use a term, it's called wasted away. And there's been some rust here. You might call this rust gone bad. Hmm, there's a pretty good term. Um, rust gone bad. C, A, natural tendency of and we should say, really, all metals to, uh, let's go react with the environment you know, another way of saying that is we uh, just call it Rust, like I said, let's see, rust gone bad. Yeah, it can go really bad. I know, you know, it's not just that we're going to call it rust. We can also think about this as an electrical process because really I'm not sure you can read this and I hope you can really rust is just something which is actually called cor uh, cor electrolysis I was going to say corrosion as I was looking at that word uh, we call it corrosion of course that's the name of the lecture today but in another way, it is electrolysis. That's what's really going on here. It is a wasting away of the metal. It is the movement of particles, of um, molecules. There is energy involved, and we're going to have to talk about that as we go through the lecture. But yeah, we start talking about rust, but really what we're talking about is electrolysis. And whether or not, whether or not we are looking at this, you know, what's happened here, 
or we're looking at a close-up view of something that looks like that, a close-up view of that's actually called pitting, P-I-T-T-I-N-G, pitting on the surface of a, uh, probably a deck in that case. There's something I want to say. It's very, very dependent on uh, relative humidity, the moisture in the air. Now, it's not just the moisture in the air, but you know, another factor here that's going to be considered, it is the pollution uh, by uh, smog or soot in the air and um, hydro, I guess it's, I guess it's called hydro, I guess you get hydrochloric acid, acid, uh, you know, acid rain. Uh, that becomes a problem and that will expedite it or increase it. And just the very fact that you are in an ocean environment, which is sea salt, you're going to get this stuff or you're going to get this stuff. So it's humidity. It's a chemical reaction of the, the acid rain type of stuff. And it's also just the salt water environment. That's very, very conducive to this thing called rust or corrosion or electrolysis. Let's look. Let's look at a uh, really simplified chart here. And we've got the rate of corrosion up on the side. We've got the relative humidity. And then we go from minimal, low, high, and we go all the way up to, stream, up to extreme here. Well, I'm not sure that you know this, but when you are at sea, when you are at sea surrounded by water, your humidity levels are up in this area right here of the 60, 70, and 80 percent humidity levels. They are way up here. They are not down here. This is the kind of stuff that you experience in a desert or experience, you know, actually um, this area here of 30, 35, 40 degrees. This area what right here is when you get that really dry air in Maine and New England in the winter time. So we, it's not just a warm weather thing. It's a cold weather thing, cold air just doesn't hold moisture as well. Do you ever notice when we have a snowstorm, it tends to warm up a little bit. We don't usually have that frigid, frigid below zero, below zero temperature uh, when we are having a snowstorm. It tends to be a little bit warmer. And as you get to that little bit of warmer, a little more air, more moisture can be in the air. But understand, we are in an area here of extreme relative humidity on a ship. I'm going to talk about the galvanic uh, series in seawater in just a minute and I need to reset myself so just a short pause. Before we talk about that galvanic series in seawater and how that let's go a little bit further with this with this particular picture. What, what's interesting is this is uh, this ship is anchored right so we can see it's got both anchors down so everything is safe and everything is secure. I'm kind of making a joke there. But there's one particular uh, thing that about this ship, which I do take note. I can see some of the coating. I can see some of the paint up here, up in this area. I also see some other paint in this area. But why do you suppose this area here was the part that really wasted away, and really corroded? We can look all the way through the hull. What do you suppose is happening there? Well, as the, the wave action of the ship, this is one thing. This is probably throughout the ship's life. This is where the wave action was the, the most hard on the ship. This is where the waves would come crashing over here and they would always be in this area. So that's one thing. I think in the lifetime of the ship and whether or not that was 20 or 30 or 40 years old, I have no idea what this ship is, but I think that's where a lot of wear and tear happened. The second thing as the ship got here and it and it lost its coating and that, and that, you know, just wasn't maintained and it was just scrapped. Basically, it was a junk or a hulk. Uh, I have no idea where this, where this might be. I suspect it's in pretty uh, warm waters. You know, every time the, the, the tide came up and the tide went down and the tide came up and the tide went down over and over, I think it wetted this area of the ship. So that constant getting wet with seawater and then drying and letting the rust get going, the corrosion, the electrolysis, if you will, I think that also was a factor. Just the rise and, and the fall of the tide really beat up that ship. Now, 
I want to move on to the other one. We can talk about this one here. We've already looked at this, and this is called pitting. Now, there is a place that you will see this on the training ship. When you walk around the training ship, so everybody kind of put their uh, magic glasses on, you walk around, close your eyes, and whatever you need to do, and visualize yourself walking somewhere around the training ship uh, on, on an exterior deck. And think to yourself, if you look down at your feet, is there any place that you saw something? Now, it may have been painted gray because we're really good at painting things gray about every year. Uh, that's what is something you would have been you would have been doing. And I hope that hopefully you can get out there on the ship this year. But this would have all been painted gray. Now, this is not a piece of the hull or the deck of the training ship. But we have we have pieces that look exactly like this. They certainly look like that. Those are not my hands, by the way, just somebody who looks like they they might be my hands. Um, though it's called pitting. And uh, if you walk around the ship, so I'll just have to tell you, but I, the place that I really see it is that you're on, let's see, I call it, as you know, I call it cell block number two, the after house. And uh, if you're up there on the reception deck or up on the helicopter uh, uh, drop area, as you start walking down, you got that cat, uh, cat, catwalk that goes back and forth on the aft side of the house going all the way down to the weather deck, all the way down, all the way down to the main deck, actually. And uh, you've got these uh, metal steel ladders. I think they're, uh, you know, they're uh, very ship-like, uh, a ladder way, or uh, I hesitate to call it a stair, but you know what I mean. Um, and as you get to the sort of the crossover, you'll notice that um, if you look down at your feet, there's a lot of corrosion here. Now, there's something happening there that, that really contributes to this. Now, the first thing is it takes a lot of wear and tear. And every time that people are going up and down and think of all the number of cadets and sailors that have gone up and down that ladder and uh, just just uh, working their feet across it, it's very hard to keep a coat of paint. Now, a coat of paint or covering or coating keeps the salt air and the seawater away from the steel. So when you get a little bit of a crack, a little bit of a wear there, you know, this is what happens. And then there's another thing, just a very uh, moist environment there. And you might notice that the, the decks are kind of like uh, those uh, those little small decks that you walk across right at the bottom when you come down to the, each level. Uh, you'll notice that they are kind of, kind of drooped. They're kind of sagged a little bit, almost as if the distortion in the metal and it's kind of a point that collects a little puddle of water so it is a really moist a really moist environment if you've ever walked out there in your shoes or even in stocking feet which you probably do some days on the cruise you'd find that you were standing in a little puddle of water particularly of course after it rains but just just in the morning uh, wetness of the you know of, of the of the uh, the dew like on the, the dew in the field or the lawn you get that at sea too and then the other thing which is happening, you get that acidic acid rain because the the uh, stat gases which are coming out as the ship's moving, as the ship's moving through the water, the stat gases are coming out and they are participating or precipitating down, precipitating, I'll use the right word, uh, Captain Teal, precipitating down onto that already wet area. All of that creates a perfect environment for this thing called pitting. Now let's move on. I want you to read this. I'm going to kind of read it, so I want you to hear it. Galvanic series in seawater. This well-known series indicates the relative nobility. There's a key word of different metals and alloys in seawater based on the measurement of corrosion potential. Another key word. In a galvanic cell, the more noble material in this series will become the cathode no metal dissolution, while the less noble metal will corrode as the anode. Now, corrode as an anode. Fix that in your mind. Corrode as an anode. What are those things that we put on the side of the ship to protect underwater? A sacrificial anode. We want to sacrifice that. We, we want that anode to corrode and, others, and, and put those words together. Corrosion, anode, and sacrificial anode. That is something at one end of the scale, which is a good thing. So just capture all that and read through this slide a couple of different times. 
you know, here is a here is a corrosion cell. This is actually a gav a galvan bleh, I can't speak galvanic cell. What you're looking at here is basically your uh, a battery. There's a there's an anode. There's a cathode. Here's a there's current flowing between the two, and you and you probably studied this and maybe in physics or back in earth sciences back in high school. You probably did a little bit of thing, a little bit of study on that. Now I want you to think about the, that pitting which happens on the deck of a ship. Now, what you have there, there's that pitting and cross section. Here is the the paint, this area here and here, and it gets worn away, it gets cracked, and really in essence, and we get a little bit of moisture in there. We have a galvantic series or a gal galvantic cell which is set right up, and that causes. And I want to go back to this that causes that pitting. It's like a little miniature battery, which happens over and over. We talk about the galvanic series. Now I'm going to send you this. It's in the PowerPoint, which I'll set, set it up. I don't know how many of you are. I, I have a feeling that not many of you are looking at the PowerPoints. I'm going to prepare those, the ones that we particularly have discussed, and I'm going to push those out and I'm going to label them with our lecture numbers, kind of try to make it a little bit more organized for you. But for right now, uh, just look at this. And on the, uh, here's the noble end, you know, think about the word noble. You think about the word nobility and kings and, you know, and that type of stuff. And, you know, the king of uh, France or the king of England or whatever it might be. And up here are, is platinum and gold and and well, geez, there's something called graphite and ti well, titanium we know is kind of precious and silvers. But, you know, we think about gold and platinum as being the very, very uppermost of the noble. They are non-corrosive. They, they are not the anode. If you go to the other end, the the uh, andonic, and excuse me, the anodic, I, I guess can't pronounce words today, anodic end, the ignoble, well, this is called the active end sometimes. You see down here, well, the one I want you to focus on is this one called zinc. Now, you know, you know that you've got uh, zincs. Those are those sacrificial anodes that, uh, anodes that are on. <laughs> Man, I can't talk today. Uh, the zincs, uh, the anodes that are, that, that are on the ship. Now, if you look here, you can see here's mild steel. That That's what ships are built out of. Now, sometimes ships are built out of aluminum alloys. Sometimes parts of ship, parts of ships, there's some stainless steel. But we don't build ships out of titanium or silver. There's some bronze on a ship. You know, the bronze is not going to rust. There's some brass. There might be some nickel plating. There's, but it, not really any lead a little bit of stainless, but basically mild steel and aluminum and mostly steel. And heck, we've been talking about steel shipbuilding. But you notice that is on the noble side of the zinc of the sacrificial anode. So it's all kind of interesting here. Kind of, kind of know. Now, one of the questions I'm going to ask you on uh, exam number three, I'm going to give you like four examples. I'll say, you know, platinum, bronze, lead, and zinc. I'll give you four of those, and I'll ask you to put those in order, like noble to um, ignoble, or we could say, or the other end, the, the anodic end. So I'm going to ask you to put those in uh, some type of order, from least corrosive, corrosive to most corrosive. All right, so get kind of be familiar with this, um, be familiar with that in that regard. That'll be a, that'll be a question on the exam. Now, not only do you get corrosion on the outside of the ship, but you get it, you know, on the inside of the ship. So here we've got a, 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 a probably a, a ballast pipe. You get a lot of salt water. This might be part of the, the uh, firefighting system. You get a lot of salt water in here, and you can see maybe where there's been a little bleed through on the gasket. But certainly, that's a very, very corrosive atmosphere. These look like stainless steel bolts, which they look like they're a little bit rusted, but they're probably not. They're probably just stained these particular bolts here. So it's not only on the exterior part of the hull. And what we're looking at here, we're looking at a deck beam and a, a, 
inside of the deck plating, but I'm pretty sure this is aluminum here. So we do get to a problem where we've got aluminum and uh, steel. Sometimes those, those are put together. Sometimes those are put together. You see a lot of, well, I won't say you see a lot of vessels, but you do see some vessels where the two get together. Now, if you go back and you look at that scale that I just showed you, you can see, let's see, aluminum, okay, and steel, they're a little bit separate. They're not real separate on the, on the scale, but there will be a little bit of corrosion. Which one is gonna go first? Which one is gonna wear away or waste away faster? The aluminum is gonna waste away faster. Just like mild steel compared to zinc. Okay, it's not as bad as zinc, but the aluminum is gonna waste away quicker. And we see that, we see a hand coming up of an inspector, and that's probably a steel hull with an aluminum deck beam and aluminum deck. Now there, there are methods when you have to have to do it properly. I don't think that was done properly, but there, there are methods of doing, um, connecting uh, steel and aluminum. So what do we got here? Aluminum to steel connections out of the book, chapter 27. So we got a steel deck, a steel deck, a steel deck in every case. And we got some type of a connection point. You can see there's a wooden deck here, you know, or something along those lines. Maybe this is a, a, a cruise ship or a, uh, some type of a yacht where they got a steel hull and they've got an aluminum uh, a superstructure or using the word house side here. And you'll notice if you study this, there is kind of a, there is a rubberized washer, neoprene washer. Um, some of this is kind of a patented material and it separates as much as possible. It separates the steel and it creates a barrier. I kind of like putting insulation over a wire. Here's another type of done. This is a hot steel rivet and uh, it connects the, it connects the two with a plastic coat gasket. And then there's this something called AL uh, bonding here, explosion bonded. And uh, that's kind of an interesting thing too. I'll show you a slide here. Here's a product that's called Triclad. And here's the steel. Here's the aluminum, this is explosion bonded that goes and it actually can separate or it can block any corrosive or electrical electrolysis potential or activity between the two. And that's kind of an interesting thing on a print, maybe on a high end yacht, you're more likely to see that. These things called sacrificial anodes uh, we talked about them a little bit. You're not the first time you've heard it. Zinc is the sacrificial anode that is attached to the steel strap or welded or bolted, bolted to the hull. Corrosion is a result of electrical, electrochemical activity, a galvanic action. Uh, metals and higher with higher electrical potential will corrode faster. And this will protect metals with lower electrical potential. Zinc has a higher potential to corrode than steel. It's just referred to as a higher potential. So the zinc will corrode before the steel, thereby, thereby reducing the possibility of steel loss. Know this point right here. When zinc, and know this, I'm telling you this for the quiz, or rather for the test, when the zinc has deteriorated beyond 50% between inspections, it should be replaced. If it's corroded beyond 50%, if that's when the zinc is corroded to beyond 50%, it should be replaced. Zincs come in all different shapes and sizes, right? Now, I've got one here that I'm pointed to. This is probably about a foot long and it's probably about two inches wide and about five inches, uh, two inches uh, in, in width and about two inches deep. Um, and so, you know, all different. This one here is probably, probably, uh, 20 inches, maybe 24 inches long. And so all different shapes and sizes. There's usually a lot of zincs. There's a lot of sacrificial anodes put back there by the propeller. Uh, that's just because you, uh, on the, where a lot of turbulence is, that's gonna, that's gonna increase the potential for uh, galvanic action down there. So, 
And notice that these zincs are kind of teardrop shaped so that they are useful to, uh, to help with, you know, that flow of water into and away from that stern section area that we talked about in previous lectures. So they, as much as they are a lump of zinc, they try to make them a little bit more, um, it's not aerodynamic, but it's called hydrodynamic. Here's a picture of just some old, used up, we'll just call them wasted zincs, old wasted zinc anodes, which are being, you know, going to the scrapyard. Now, on the state of Maine, we have something called an impressed current cathode protection system. And you'll uh, probably learn about this. You'll see this talked about in the text. But basically, uh, although we do use anodes on the ship, the system is still working. And we uh, actually put a uh, induced current into the hull of the ship, very, very low, very, very low power, low amps, just just enough to, to, to combat that electrolysis. And if you want to do further reading on it, you could look in the text, but it's called an impressed current cathode protection system. Well, I'm going to leave you with that today and uh, we'll go back and uh, I'll be back on Wednesday. Hey, let's remember that I've given you a homework assignment to write. It's actually a quiz to uh, to write about those two fairies from last Friday's uh, lecture, the uh, Herald of Free Enterprise and the uh, passenger vehicle ferry Estonia. The two of them had horrific accidents up in the European waters. And I'm asking you to write that. And that's in the form of a quiz. So it's going to uh, and that is due tomorrow night at midnight. That's due tomorrow night at midnight. I'm not going to ask you any questions about there. There is no discussion points on this, on this particular one. I'll expect you to know the material. If you have any questions, please write to me and uh, just let me know and we'll check in together. And that's all I got. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll do this again for Wednesday. Bye-bye.